For some time now, I've been trying to make my DDCS device. And if you've checked out my YouTube videos, you know that I've succeeded for the most part. Um, but in this video, I just want to go through uh, the different techniques I've explored in the past. And the first one was the most primitive one, and that's the, the resistors. Um, you just use plain resistors, take a 9 volt battery, you stick the resistor in there, and you lower the current down to uh, about 1 or 2 milliamps. Well, there's a huge problem with that, and that's the head resistance changes. So it's hard to maintain a constant, uh, a constant current. And any shaking of the head or movements will cause the resistance to change, and you have to basically stay perfectly still. Otherwise, you'd have to keep altering the resistance, for example, with a potentiometer to maintain current resistance. So that wasn't very good. I just put babies on there because it's just one thing. You just need a battery, resistor, and sponges. Um, but the next one I saw was uh, one made by BRM Labs. It's probably still up. And this one uses a uh, voltage regulator. And what regulators do is that it just keeps something constant. And if it's a voltage regulator, it keeps the voltage constant. Um, I made it, and I couldn't get the current to stay constant. And I wasn't sure. I, I, I suspected the problem is still with the resistance. By keeping the voltage uh, constant, that means the only thing that can change is current and resistance. If a resistance changes, such as in the case with a the resistor, then the current's going to change. So this is really no better than using a plain old resistor. Um, I might have did something wrong, but uh, I don't know. I followed the, uh, the schematic pretty well. The one I currently have, my current TDCS device uses this one. It uses a transistor. It uses uh, this type of transistor. It's a LM334Z current regulator. So these are actual current regulators. So it keeps the current constant by varying the voltage. And uh, you could check out my tutorial um, on my YouTube channel, um, Boxit, which is uh, youtube.com slash science music reason. Or you could just type it into, type TDCS into YouTube, and it's uh, on the front page. So this is the model uh, that uses the transistor. It's all tangled up, and uh, I'm, having, I'm not going to use this one anymore. The ends of the sponge, the sponge is like a few months old. The alligator clips are really corroded because it's a copper alligator clip, and uh, I'm low on batteries and everything. So, um, and it's it's pretty nice, but it's still too chunky for you know for what I want to do. I just want to have a little cap, and then just when I have a cap on, just put it on and start studying. So this is a little bit too chunky. Then what I'm working on now, it looks like this. But of course, uh, well, I'm not even close to being done because I don't have the parts. I uh, ordered it, and uh, they haven't come. They haven't come yet, but they will soon. Um, so basically, I just what I'm making now is an HD TDCS device. It's a multi-channel device. Uh, so the current will go through the cathode. And then as it enters the, or the anode, and as it goes through the cathode, it was split into four, five, six, however, however many anodes or cat, uh, cathodes I want. And then the current would be split into each of the uh, five or four ca uh, cathodes, sponges. And that would make it so that you would reduce the effects of the cathode, which is to basically make your, that part of the part of the brain dumber wherever you put it on. And uh, I just have the LED there just to just to see if it's uh, if the circuit's connected or not. And I only have two transistors for the cathode because uh, I ran out of transistors. So right when I get more, I'll complete this. The next one is something I just found out, and I was like, oh my gosh! If I knew about this earlier, this would have been so much easier. And this one is a diode. So current regulating diodes, not Zener diodes or some other type of diode. These are current regulating diodes. And unlike Zener diodes, it isn't a, a little tubular sort of object. It's just like, it looks just like a transistor with two legs. And all it does is you can buy one milliamp or two milliamp or half milliamp diodes, uh, current regulating diodes. And literally, you just plug it in like a resistor. The drawback is, is that you can't change the current um, with just a simple, which is the regular circuit. But if you have multi, 
Um, if you have if you have, if you have switches that has multiple settings, like, so if you have multiple path, multiple paths, you can just use multiple diodes. A diode for half a milliamp or one milliamp and two milliamp. You can use all three of those. And see if you have a switch that uh, allows you to switch between three paths, then that'll work. Finally, you could use well, actually two. More. Oh yeah. Finally, uh, you could use other more complicated ones such as um, pre-programmed integrated circuits. There's hundreds, pro yeah, there's probably hundreds of these you can find. This is just one of them, the LM3936. Uh, there's it's basically the same. There's input and an output. Um, and in between the input and the output, there's always some sort of com uh, configuration saying you can always just change, mess around, and to, to alter it. Uh, I think typically these are made to be very, very efficient. So if you want something to be, I guess, a uh, commercial product, you might want to use these. So uh, I just want to talk about now the difference between regular TDCS and HDTDS, DCS. There's actually a pretty big difference. Um, the the typical regular TDCS you've seen, like the one I have here, and uh, uh, the, what is it, Folk, Focus, Folk.us, the, the manufacturer of TDCS devices, and a bunch of other TDCS devices which manufactures regular TDCS. Um, regular TDCS has basically a sponge, two sponges. One sponge for the anode, other sponge for the cathode. So the electricity will go to th uh, through from the anode, uh, which is by definition the anode is where electricity comes from, and then out through the brain and to throughout the cathode. Well, the problem is is that the the anode makes your brain uh, stimulate stimulates the brain to produce uh, or to release more neurotransmitters, whereas the cathode reduces the brain's release of neurotransmitters. But if you're if you're wanting to make your brain smarter, one area smarter, you don't you also don't want to make your other part of the brain dumber. So you know so so what you want to do is uh, you want to max maximize the effect of the anode while minimizing the effect of the cathode. Um, currently, researchers have multiple ways of doing this. The one I'm doing, or the research I'm doing uh, with, with the, in, in the uh, neuroscience departments, all you, all, we, we usually just put it on our shoulder. But there is a problem with that too, because you know, the electricity goes through the brain from the anode, and then all the way down it reaches to the cathode, and the effects of it are kind of diminished, uh, diminished as well. So, and other people also suggested using larger cathodes, but uh, I, I don't think that's how electricity works. Electricity wants to go through the fastest route, and if you have a large, um, large cathode, it might just you know ignore much of the uh, a large sponge. It might just ignore a lot of the sponge. So you know it, may, it wouldn't make any difference. So what you have is you want the goal of TDCS is to be very focalized. You don't want to mess around with much of the brain. You just want to focus, focus, focus just on one part of the brain, because if you mess around with a lot of the brain, you, you can often you can often kind of screw up some stuff. Like I've noticed, uh, if I put on the wrong part of my head, um, no matter what sponge it is, I sometimes can feel uh, I sometimes feel really bad, like depressed bad. So you don't want to mess up. You just want to target one specific part of the brain that you want, and that would be that's where the T HD TCS the DCS comes in. You can have a very tiny little sponge and just put it in, say, for example, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and uh, it won't stimulate too much of the other part of the brain because you'll have four other sponges that's um, or four or five, six, whatever, uh, that makes a bullseye sort of thing around the, uh, the, the central anal sponge. And what happens is the currents would travel from the, um, the, the anal sponge out throughout the cathode sponges but the electricity would be spread out so much that it's that that's diluted to a point where it's it's basically not causing any inhibitory effect. So uh, overall, HD TDCS is much better than regular TDCS. Um, I'm trying to make one right here. It's not nearly complete because I don't have the parts that I need, and I don't know if it's going to work yet because I've never I've never tried it. Well, yeah. So this is basically the summary of. Uh, all the TDCS stuff I've been doing in the past few years for really just to just for fun, and I was always I was always interested in looking for ways to make myself smarter. Um, after talking to this this genius girl um, I met from a friend, that's just that just totally refreshed my um, interest in becoming smarter. Uh, she's 16. She's a senior in college, and she knows fluently over 10 programming languages from Java to C++ to, to MATLAB to everything. So um, 
I'm jealous, sort of, and I want to catch up. Yeah.